Hey, I'm Chef Aaron Fish, and this is Fish Food, where we make tasty, approachable snacks. And today, we're making my take on birria tacos with some Nyman Ranch chuck roll, pasilla peppers, some chipotles, and we're gonna knock it up a little bit with some Trinidad scorpion powder. All right, so you may have seen birria blowing up online, on social media, or maybe in food magazines, or maybe you just don't know what it is. So it is a traditional Mexican dish from Atalisco in Mexico, where it's usually a braised goat and a stew. Um, today I'm using that Nyman Ranch chuck roll beef and uh, my own chili blends, so let's get to it. All right, so first thing we gotta do is we gotta cut up this chuck roll. Wait a second, am I out of candy ginger? Huh, weird. All right, so now that this is cut up, we're gonna go ahead and plug in our pressure cooker and get rolling. All right, so we're gonna toast up these chilies a little bit, and I've got my pressure cooker plugged in here. I'm gonna go ahead and kick it onto saute. Um, 30 minutes is fine, we're gonna let it go. Um, and while it's doing its thing, I'm gonna kinda seed these. Uh, what you wanna do is get the seeds out because it's gonna make it bitter. So, ooh, it's beeping at me. That means it's on. So, we're gonna get all the seeds out of these guys. Just toss them in here. We're not too worried about uh, the big chunks or like a little seed or two is fine. Um, it's just you don't want the majority of that seed pot in there. And I'm sure there's like a better traditional way to do this. Um, but this is how I do it. All right, so it's taking a second, but my chilies are toasting. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna, I got some cinnamon. Um, I've got some bay leaves. I'm just gonna transfer them to this other bowl because I've got some coriander seeds that I wanna toast too. And I'm just gonna do it together. Um, it's not like, you know, the normal way you would do this. But um, I want to warm them up and just kind of give a nice light toast on them. And I'm going to pour all this stuff out of here in a few minutes. And um, hopefully I timed it right. Now, if you are concerned about timing it right, just you can toast the coriander seeds in a separate pan. You can even toast the chilies in a dry pan. If you don't have a pressure cooker, you can do this in a, in a pot and braise it um, in the oven or slow cook it on the stove. And we'll kind of go over those processes as we're doing this today. All right, so my chilies are toasty. Uh, I'm gonna pull them out. Um, a lot of people like to take these red ones a little bit darker, but I'm not super worried about it. We're just gonna pull this out. And you wanna be real careful about this. If you're not used to doing stuff like this, you don't wanna burn yourself. This, this is pretty hot. Um, stick it right back in. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start searing off our meat. Now, I've got some bacon fat that I saved from breakfast this morning. Uh, I'm gonna use this just because I think it'll be wild and fun. Um, traditionally, most people use lard or they use oil. Uh, this has got a pretty high smoke point. It's been filtered, so I feel pretty good about it. So I'm gonna put it in here. I'm gonna let that stuff melt. And we're just gonna work in batches on this beef. And we're gonna start uh, searing it off. We also wanna season it with some salt. And it's okay if you uh, aren't like, you know, don't get it totally everywhere. Um, Cause this is all gonna combine as it cooks down and everything anyways. So, let's see how hot this is. Perfect. Put them in here, work in batches. Now once again, we're talking, you don't have a, uh, a pressure cooker, no big deal. We can do this in a um, cast iron Dutch oven or just a cast iron pan or a pot if you have a pot. And we're just gonna basically keep turning this, get it nice and caramelized and brown, and move on to the next step. All right, so we're searing this stuff off. We're looking for some caramelization, kind of like this. I mean, you really want it to look nice and uh, rich like that. All right, our meat's all browned off. We've got some beautiful fond in the pan, which is like all the grits and pieces that are on the bottom down there. I'm gonna add some onions. And we're gonna let that cook. For a few minutes, we're gonna stir it till we kinda get a little translucent. All right, so onions are starting to get translucent-ish, kinda brownish from the beautiful bacon grease. I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, my slivered garlic. I just slice it. You know, a lot of this stuff, you can even julienne the onions or rough chop them. It doesn't really matter because we're gonna strain some of this liquid out and uh, puree it and make it more of a sauce in the final product. So just, you do you. Don't worry about perfect knife cuts. We're gonna let this cook. Um, for mm, maybe like a minute or two. Really, I just want that garlic to get fragrant and start the process of it, um, you know, breaking down. All right, I got about a quarter cup of tomato paste. We're gonna plop that back in there. Woo, I guess not back in there. It was, over, it was never already in there. So, I'm gonna let this cook for another couple minutes. If you want the tomato paste to kind of caramelize, it's just gonna help uh, bloom and unlock some of those flavors. All right. 
So, we've got tomato paste caramelizing. I'm gonna go ahead and deglaze with a little red wine vinegar. Uh, deglaze, we're talking about just kind of pulling up any of that fond that also kind of started sticking to the bottom of the pan or pressure cooker. Um, and then next step is we're gonna go ahead and um, dump our chilies in there and all our spices. So there's bay leaves, there's chilies, there's coriander seeds, and a cinnamon stick. I'm gonna give it a little stir, just kinda let it work itself into that. Um, I'm gonna put the meat in here. And if there's any juice in the bottom of your, uh, you know, what you reserved your meat in, just go ahead and dump it in there. All right, let's so get that in there. Oh yeah. I'm gonna add some beef stock. I got two quarts here. We might need a little less, we'll see. Really, we just wanna kinda get up to about there. It's gonna release some juices, so it was more like a quart and a half. Alrighty, and then I've got a little bit of sugar we're gonna pour in there. We're gonna create like a sweet hot. And the Trinidad scorpion powder. Now, this stuff is crazy hot. I put like an eighth of a teaspoon in some mac and cheese and it was, it was hot. Um, so we're just gonna put about I think, let's, let's go half a teaspoon. Let's see how this does. And then we're just gonna kinda break it up a little bit. Not super worried about it. We're gonna put the lid on and we're gonna pressure cook on high for about an hour. All right, so our birria has been going for about an hour and a half. We're gonna go ahead and pull it out. Now, we talked about, um, you know, well, I'm going to be pulling all this meat out first. Let's go there. And uh, we're gonna puree this sauce, but we talked about, um, you know, you don't have a pressure cooker. What's your, what's your options here? Um, you can use, uh, you can slow cook this over a stove top um, until the meat's tender. You could um, put it in like a Dutch oven and put it in your oven at like, maybe like 300 degrees and slow cook it that way. Same thing, it might take like three or four hours. Uh, you just really want the meat to be tender and the flavors to, to come. Now you can see I'm, I'm pulling this out and there's you know still like some onions are in here. That's okay. We're gonna shred all the meat. And it's okay if there's a little bit of onions in there. But really we just wanna get all the meat out of here um, and then I'm gonna puree this. We're gonna check the salt content and then um, if I need to season it up, we'll go from there. Okay, we got all the meat out. Got two forks. We're just gonna work our way through and just shred it. Um, you want nice Nice shreds. Uh, chunks is fine too. I mean, really just, you know, get the meat all cut up the way you want it. Um, we're gonna be putting these in some tacos and grilling them, but you could put this on nachos. I mean, you can put it in a burrito. You could just fry an egg and put it on here and eat it. That sounds pretty good too. It smells amazing. Okay, I got our meat shredded. Uh, I'm gonna take this nifty gadget here and we're gonna puree the sauce. Now, if you don't have one of these, you can definitely use uh, a blender, um, food processor, really whatever you got is fine. We're just making our, our consomme. It's not a real consomme because, um, you know, that's gonna be clarified that this is, uh, you know, what they call it is a consomme um, in regards to the birria tacos that we're making, so. All right, so uh, we've got our shredded meat over here. I've got our consomme, which uh, I just tasted. And that scorpion powder is like, man, we guessed just right. It's like the perfect amount of heat. It's got a little sweet and that sugar. Um, but you know, that heat comes through and it's amazing. Um, I've got a saute pan here, cast iron specifically, um, heating over medium heat. I'm gonna put a little bit of, just a little smidge of oil in there. And then this is the trick is you, uh, take your tortilla and you can see there's some fat on here that's fine you want all that it's all flavor we're just gonna dip our tortilla in here okay it's gonna go right on there next step is we're gonna put some cheese on there now this is panela you can use like a waka cheese or mozzarella if you want to use mozzarella um, or like a jack cheese if you if you prefer something like that. Or no cheese if you don't want any cheese at all. So the trick is we're gonna let this cook over kind of a medium, I'll turn it down a little bit because it's a little hot. Medium to medium low heat. We're gonna let that cheese melt. We're gonna put a little bit of this meat on here. We're gonna grab some of the, some of the nice good shredded pieces. Check the 
inside of the tortilla. And it's starting to get crispy. So we can fold it now. And one of the techniques I've seen too is that, you know, as it's cooking, actually here, let's open it back up. We're just gonna put a little of this sauce in here. Oh yeah, just a little bit. Um, one of the techniques I've seen is uh, they get kind of a nice little ladle over the top. And then, you know, when we go to flip it, we get a little bit more, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just kind of moving it around to get it in some of the juice. All right, so our tacos are all grilled. Um, I did four. You can just keep making them, just keep making them. I guarantee you people are gonna be eating these. Um, so we're gonna throw them on the plate. These don't have to worry too much about plating too nice. I've got some of that quote unquote consomme you know, in a dish here. I'm gonna put some fresh cut onions in here. This is gonna be kind of like, you know, if you were dipping your French dip in a, the au jus, we're gonna dip it in this and it's gonna be amazing. So, put this right here. I like to throw a few lime wedges on here. I know it's not traditional, but I just wanna, you know, maybe a little acid will help uh, cut through some of that. There's not enough acid in the consomme or just brighten it up. All right, so you guessed it right. It's time to get into these pan tacos, man. These look so good. So this is how you do it. You just take this, you dip it in here. Oh yeah, you want the sauce in there. So the onions. Mm. Oh man, it's savory. Sweet, acidic, cheesy, meaty. That pepper shining through, my scorpion pepper is great. Almost has like a, that tropical element, kind of like a habanero. Now it has like that kind of sweet heat. This is killer. Another bite. Look at that, mmm. That, delicious. 